We're now going to embark on our proof that little g, which was, if you remember, the set of matrices x such that x tx is in big G for all t, is a Lie subalgebra of little g ln r. In other words, it's a vector space, it's preserved by a commutator bracket and um, some other things. So we're going to actually start by proving the other thing, which was that little g is parallel to the tangent space of big G at the identity. So I'll tell you what that sentence means at the end um, of the video. Um, so I'm going to start by proving a theorem, which is essentially equivalent to what I just said. So here's the theorem. Um, if gamma of S is a path in G, in other words, for each element S of the real numbers, gamma of S is a matrix in G, um, such that gamma at zero is the identity, so at time zero you're passing through the identity matrix, then d gamma by ds at S equals zero is in little g. What does this mean? Let's do an example. Uh, let's take gamma of s to be uh, cos s minus sine s sine s cos s, our favorite rotation matrix by an angle s. Um, that's what I mean by a path of matrices. You can check that when s is zero, you get one, zero, zero, one. And you can also calculate d gamma by ds, by which I just mean differentiate each matrix entry with respect to s. So what do you get? You get minus sine s, minus cos s, uh, cos s, minus sine s. That is what I mean by d gamma by ds. And when we set uh, s equal to zero, we just get zero, minus one, one, zero. And indeed, that is in the Lie algebra, little g, of the rotation group in two dimensions. We've seen that's the anti-symmetric matrices. So this theorem is useful because it gives us a way of producing elements that we know are inside the Lie algebra. Um, so this theorem will be a crucial part of uh, proving that little g is a vector space. Um, preserved by the bracket. So let's prove it. Um, so, first of all, what, what are we trying to prove? We need to prove that um, exp t d gamma by ds at s equals zero is in g for all t, and it's actually sufficient to prove that um, exp d gamma by ds at s equals zero is in g with no mention of t. Why is that? Well, if we can prove this supposedly weaker statement, um, we can apply it when, you know, we, to this path, delta of s equals gamma of s times t and then d delta by ds by the chain rule is t times d gamma by ds. So we can get that t inside the x just by using a different path, a reparametrized path. Um, so we'll prove this instead. We'll prove that x d gamma by ds at zero is in g. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the logarithm, I'm going to call it h of s, of gamma of s. And maybe that doesn't make sense for all s, but it does make sense for small s. So define h of s to be log of gamma of s for small s. This makes sense for small s because when s is small, gamma of s is close to the identity and log is defined in a neighborhood of the identity. Let's compute the derivative 
of dh uh, of h by s so dh by ds um, at zero by the chain rule this is the derivative of a log at the identity applied to d gamma by ds um, at zero at s equals zero okay d at the identity of log is if you remember from the video about um, the existence of log, this is equal to d at zero of exp inverse, right? Because exp and log are inverse to one another, so their derivatives are also inverse to one another. And the, the subscript here just says, well, exp of zero is one, so when we're going the other way, we need to be taking the derivative at one instead of the derivative at zero. Anyway, what is this derivative? If you remember, it's the identity. The derivative at zero of the exponential map is the identity on matrices. So the same is true for the logarithm because the inverse of the identity is the identity. So in other words, dh by ds at s equals zero is d gamma by ds at s equals zero. So it's actually sufficient to prove that d, uh, exp of dh by ds at s equals zero is in G. Now, what is dh by ds at s equals zero? Let's go right back to the definition of the derivative. This is the limit as epsilon goes to zero of h at epsilon minus h at zero over epsilon. h at zero is zero because gamma, right, gamma remember is exp of h. So gamma at zero is exp of h of zero and that's the identity. So h of zero is, is zero. And we can take any sequence of epsilons going to zero. So let's take epsilon to be one over n, where n is the integers. So this is the same as the limit as n goes to infinity of h of 1 over n divided by 1 over n. So in other words, the limit of n h of 1 over n as n goes to infinity. OK, where am I going with this? Well, this quantity inside the limit turns out to be something we can get at a different way. So recall that gamma of s is exp of hs, just by definition of h. And this is an element of g for all s. We're assuming this is a path in the group. And because g is a group, we can raise this guy to any integer power and stay inside the group. So gamma of s to the n, which is just exp n hs, is also in the group for all s. This is, I guess, it's not quite true for all s. This is true for all s small. Because h isn't even defined for large values of s. OK, so what we can do is we can take s to be 1 over n for sufficiently large n. And then we get exp n h of 1 over n is in G for all N. And now what we can do is we can let N go to infinity. So as N goes to infinity, this matrix or the sequence of matrices converges to exp of dH by dS at S equals zero as N goes to infinity. But G is topologically closed. So this is the key assumption that we're using. This is the way we're using it. G is a topologically closed group of matrices. Therefore, this limit is also in G. And that's what we wanted to prove. If you go back, what we needed to prove by this point was that X of dH by dS at zero is in G. 
little end of proof sign there. So you can see we're really using this fact that G is topologically closed to, to, to deduce this. Okay, um, let me just go back up and look at the statement again. So if gamma is a path in G passing through the identity at time zero, then d gamma by ds at zero is in little g. So this construction, taking a path and taking its derivative at a point, has a name. It's called a tangent vector. So definition, if gamma uh, of s is a path, let's say in Rn, um, then d gamma by ds is called the tangent vector. As, as s varies, you get a varying vector. So this is called the tangent vector or the tangent field. Um, along gamma. So what we're proving is that so the theorem implies that little g um, contains all tangent vectors to big G at the identity. Um, let me just do a, an example. Here's the circle. Um, here's the identity. So I'm thinking about this as, as U1, right, in the complex numbers. Uh, there's the identity element. Um, here's a path. It just starts at 1 and it moves around the unit circle. So at time s, you are at the point e to the i s. So that's gamma of s. What is d gamma by d s? Well, it's i e to the i s. So for example, what is d gamma by ds at s equals zero? It's i. It's an imaginary number, just pointing upwards. So we always translate that vector to the point where we're taking the tangent vector and draw it like that. So that's just pointing upwards. If we did this at a different time, say, uh, I don't know, time pi over two, uh, what will we get? Well, we get i times e to the i pi over 2. e to the i pi over 2 is i, so we get minus 1. And at time pi over 2, we've reached this point, i, in the circle. So the tangent vector would be pointing in the minus 1 direction. In other words, the negative x direction. And indeed, we get a vector that's tangent to the circle. So this is, this is the kind of thing I mean by tangent vector. So what we've now proved is... Um, the tangent space to the group G at the identity uh, is a subset of the Lie algebra little g. And actually the converse is also true. So let's just quickly prove that uh, claim. Conversely, if x is in little g, then there is a path. There is a path, gamma of s in G, such that uh, d gamma by ds at uh, s equals zero equals x, and I guess gamma of zero is the identity. What is the path? Just take gamma of s to be x s x. And now it's an exercise for you to check that that satisfies these conditions. So this is saying really the tangent space at the identity of G is the Lie algebra, little g, at least up to a translation.